Hello everyone, welcome back to the latest episode. This time I will be showcasing my black green mill deck, which I've aptly named Dol Guldur. And Dol Guldur, also known as the Hill of Dark Sorcery, was Sauron's stronghold and base of operations while secretly regaining his power as the Necromancer. It was located in the south of Mirkwood and it bears a striking resemblance to the dark forests in The Hobbit, making it a perfect uh, thematic fit for this deck. My goal here is to capture the sense of dangerous and mysterious Dol Guldur within the stack. The primary objective of the stack is to mill our opponent's stack until they have no cards left to draw. To achieve this I have included Smeagol, <laughs> helpful guide, a funny name, as a central card which synergizes perfectly with Call of the Ring. During our end step, if a creature died under our control that turn, the ring tempts us. Whenever the ring tempts us, target opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card. And put that card onto the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest into their graveyard. Essentially our strategy revolves around Smeagol Helpful Guide with the Call of the Ring, those are the main cards in the stack. Um, to repeatedly trigger the ring's ability. We have also several other cards like Golem Spite we can utilize from the graveyard. Additionally, we have also Urukai Berserker, is a creature that tempts us when it enters the battlefield. Our deck also features removal cards such as Claim the Precious for 3 mana and 1 ring to rule them all, so we can um, use the abilities and I have added other thematic cards that complement our strategy such as Rise of the Witch King. When Smeagol dies for example we can sacrifice another creature and return him to the battlefield or even another permanent card. Of course we can't forget about the Witch King of Angmar and I also included Kankra, the massive spider from the Return of the King. While Kankra is a very expensive card, uh, with Smeagol helping us continually acquire lands from our opponent, casting it becomes much easier. We have also included the Ring Graves, uh, which serve as a removal option. Also we have Shadow of the Enemy. Uh, the latter is essential for milling our opponent's deck and subsequently allowing us to cast all the creatures from the graveyard. So that's our overarching strategy, milling. To address our limited land count, uh, only 12 swamps and 9 forests, I have also introduced the Wise Pathfinder and this creature, um, yeah, you can tap it, add one mana of any color. Because I wanted to make it a little bit different, I didn't want to include the Nazguls, so yeah. Um, and then we have yeah this deck and i would say let's play some games so here we go and we are playing against a mythic player hopefully we'll start the game yeah perfect especially against higher ranked players it's vastly beneficial to start the game otherwise with block decks it's very hard to compete with the, them so and we'll start the game with four lands also claim the precious we have smeagol helpful guide and kankra so actually it shouldn't be a problem to cast also Kankra because we have already 5 lands and with the help of Smeagol um, that can steal some lands from the opponent it shouldn't be also a problem. Jorkaden, one of the Phyrexian cards from the set, all will be one. So yeah, it benefits from um, equipment so it's okay for us. And then I was just wondering how they are selecting players for rank games. Is it because there are not that many players currently playing, so you have to compete against uh, a much higher ranked player? Or is it always random? Because yeah, it's strange, we are just platined and we are uh, competing against a mythic player. So we can also use Smeagol's ability or Fateful Absence. Also a very powerful card, you can just kill a creature by spending 2 mana. Elspeth Smite deals 3 damage, but it should be enough. I mean, we have already the land, so we can cast next turn Kankra. Protean War Engine, zero 4 Vehicle, and Crew 3. Yeah, also one of the alchemy cards, and then we can cast Kankra. 8-8, eight, eight, and they have only 2 lands. The good thing is Kankra has Ward, so... Fateful Absence, for example, doesn't work. And yeah, GG, that was fast. I mean, they were very unlucky because of the lands. So, I'm thinking if our opponent is playing a Boros stack or he was uh, waiting for another mana. For another mana color. And oh, we have three copies of Wolf's Pathfinder, so 
we have enough lands and we have enough mana actually that can be produced and ring graves nice then we can also cast next turn smeagol and our Durkadin or Kaden uh, again but it's cool because uh, usually when we are playing against the very high ranked players they usually are playing either the blue black alchemy deck with shield red or the other one uh, the ramp deck with Atraxa so it's very refreshing also to see a mythic player using another deck and then yeah, we can also use Gollum, Patient Plotter as a blocker or he can also attack. The most important is this creature has to die also. So, because the ring tempts us then. Oh, Brotherhood's end. So yeah, they also kill their own creature. Obviously they are very scared of Smeagol and I think we can also cast Woe's Pathfinder. Um, yeah, maybe they are also scared because they have uh, not enough lands, who knows, maybe they want to cast some very huge creatures on the battlefield. And let's see, they have still four. Oh, mana from Hellkite. Yeah, I love the animation, it's so powerful. Four mana, a flying dragon. And whenever you cast a sorcery or instant spell, you are creating a flying dragon token on the battlefield with haste. And at the end of the of your turn you have to sacrifice it but yeah that can be a lot of uh, damage then and x i think it's equal to the mana cost of that and then wow well, mana from hellkite again so i mean we have a chance by casting one ring to rule them all so yeah with ring graves we are not able to kill one of these dragons I think we can also use Wandering to rule them all. Hopefully, they have no instant or sorcery spells. Otherwise, we are dead because each of them will create a flying token. So let's hope. Oh, Wandering to rule them all. Oh, even artifacts count. Okay, so yeah, 16 damage. Uh, we are dead. <laughs> GG. That was also fast. Yeah, we cannot do anything against flying creatures, unfortunately. So, yeah. And our opponent is indeed playing a Boros deck. And Boros decks are usually very fast, so that's good that we are starting this game. Um, yeah, but I don't see Smeagol. Only we have Mirkut Spider, two copies, Woe's Pathfinder. Yeah, not the best hand. The problem is also Mirkut Spider, they don't have reach, only Death Touch. So we cannot do anything against those flying creatures. Inchblade Companion. So we can cast, um, let's see. I mean, we can start with more mana, so we can also use Woe's Pathfinder's ability. And actually those cards are very cheap. Also, we don't have Ring Graves, we don't have uh, Kankra, Lion Slash. Yeah, Lion Slash is also an awesome card because you can just uh, exile uh, cards from the graveyard and it got and it will get a plus one plus one counter. So yeah, we can also use Golem's uh, Golem Patient Plotter and Woe's Pathfinder. I think it's important to bring as many creatures as possible on the uh, battlefield. Um, yeah, but the problem is we didn't either uh, draw Smeagol Helpful Guide nor the Call of the Ring, Andril Flame of the West. Yeah, Entish Restoration still in the deck, unfortunately. But soon we I just need one more wild card. So yeah, <laughs> we ran out of cards so quickly. To be honest, it doesn't look good. We have so we have a lot of creatures, but all of them are very weak. So they are not trading Inchblade Companion for Golem Patient Plotter, Ma uh, Miril Shield of Argive. Wow, that's a huge threat. And we have uh, another copy of Woe's Pathfinder. 
Um, we can attack with one Miracle Spider. Oh yeah, it gives also Death Touch to a legendary creature. So I, next time we can also attack with Golem Patient Plotter. Although they might play, uh, block with Inchblade Companion. Monastery Mentor. Hmm. Some soldiers on the battlefield. Yeah, Exile, they will get a plus... Oh no. But they are exiling just cards. Um, perfect, if they are going to attack with Shield of Argive, we can block with Mirkut Spider. So yeah, at least we, this is the advantage of this card. It has Death Touch, so... Um, I mean, Lion Slash, uh, Sash, or Monastery Mentor. I mean, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you create a 1-1 one -one creature token. Which one is more uh, threatening for us? I think Monastery Mentor. Because, yeah, we shouldn't let the opponent have too many creatures on the battlefield. I mean, the, qu the quantity we have indeed on our side. And then we can, yeah, level one of the temptation. We can use that. So we can also block or uh, attack with Golem Patient Plotter again. Just to reach level 2. Oh yeah, here they have also the mountain. Yeah, wow. Mirkut Spider is right now the MVP. Uh, he, uh, this creature is just saving our... Yeah. Is saving us, I would say. Hex Gold Halberd. Okay, also another token. Um... I mean, hopefully we'll not draw any more lands. And they're, yeah, exiling a card. Oh, claim the precious, perfect. So, yeah, we can get rid of Miriel, Shield of Argive. And now it looks pretty good for us. I mean, just uh, two, three turns uh, before, I mean, it was very bad. But we, get, we got rid of the... Muriel, Shield of Argive, and the other monast uh, Monastery Monk. And now we have also Temptation level 2. Yeah, we can discard the forest. Wow, how the tables turned. And then we can also cast Golem. Wow, we actually it's not that bad, even, even though we don't have Smeagol Helpful Guide and Call of the Ring. And then we will attack with the ring graves and also with the Mirkut Spider. Yeah, Faithful Absence, so at least we can also sacrifice this token. Ah, okay, I see. Ah, Exile Target card from the graveyard. Oh, that's a good uh, move. Yeah, that's very, that, that's very good from, from them. But yeah, we have Smeagol Helpful Guide, and they also don't have any cards left. Wow, Andril Flame of the West is creating two tokens? I didn't know that. Oh, we have to be fast right now. Most Pathfinder, that's the fourth copy. Anyway, we have to cast both creatures and then we will attack with all them, of them. And yeah, it depends. I mean, who is quicker? They can also equip the creature and they will create... The good thing is, yeah, they're cre creating tapped creature tokens on the battlefield. So we have five creatures if we are going to attack with all of them. They might block the the biggest one. It's Smeagol Helpful Guide, so free. Yeah, actually they are dead. Also, we have Shadow of Enemy right now. So we can cast, for example, Mural Shield of Argive and also the Monk Lion Sash. Wow. So we can also cast Lion Sash and attack with two creatures. It should be enough. Yeah, Smeagol. Okay, actually they could also block Smeagol, but GG. Wow, we have we, we have won against a mythic player. 
And it was very refreshing to play against a Bific player that is not using always the same decks as I said before. The blue-black uh, alchemy deck with shield red and the other one is the uh, ramp deck with Atraxa. So it was very refreshing to see also the Boros deck. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you like the format I'm playing, I'm just using um, decks from one certain set. Uh, please subscribe and see you next time. Bye-bye.